Nikki, you are a teenager. You cannot buy the bar. I mean, Jack doesn't care, so he's gonna sell it to you. Alright, we're still here with the Buttons household, uh, and things are about to get interesting here because Plume and, shoot, what's her name, Susie, have some interesting news for Olivia today. Plume, I suppose, has been elected to tell her, so they're gonna sit here and he's gonna tell her, you know what, Olivia, it is time, uh, Olivia, get off your phone, please. She's telling him about his day, but he's like, Olivia, it is time for you to move out of the house. And she's like, excuse me, no, I have found you a nice little apartment that's not too far away and you can live there. And I paid the first deposit and rent for you, but you gotta go there and you gotta pay once you're there. You need to learn to live. You need to get a job, make friends, and live in the world. She is not happy. Oh, Susie's cleaning up the pizza she ordered last night. It's like, a, I know you don't like this, Olivia, but... The decision's been made. You can't live here anymore. Well, there's Gwen out there. He actually has the desire to become friends with Gwen, so I'm gonna have him come take a take a walk and uh, have a chat with Gwen who, out here. These two, they bond a lot over their shared love of art, even though she apparently just likes cooking and she's leaving. And he's gotta go to work. Oh, she's preparing herself. She's like, oh great, now I gotta be out in the world. I better prepare myself. You better come up into your room and start packing. So now she is on her way driving to their her new little apartment that her dad got her. All right, she's moved into her new apartment, or she's not moved in, but she we just arrived. Uh, she's meeting Jack, her neighbor, her new neighbor. Oh, and her dad is here too to help her move. Jack is the first person, the first new person she's met in a while. The, here you can see all of her stuff being moved out of the truck. Bloom, this is not her apartment. You don't have to clean in here for her. This is her apartment down here. It's the the bottom one that the landlady isn't in. The landlady actually, she she's already talking uh, to Plume because he's the one that's paid that's paid the first rent, so he's who she knows. Yeah, we're just gonna casually do this in Bonnie's apartment. I'm gonna have her have a a rude introduction, even though they're already introduced. But she's like, your father tells me you are a very lazy person without a job, and I don't take well to people that don't pay their rent. So you better pay your rent, Missy, because I don't like it when people don't pay their rent. She and Plume are having their own fight. Oh, she's like, this place is kind of dingy. I'm not sure if I love this place. It's kind of gross. It's not the night. It's a significant uh, downgrade from living in her parents' mansion. There's the bedroom. Here's the bedroom. The other bedroom. Oh, now she's angry. She's at her dad. Oh, they're having an argument. She's like, I hate it here. You can't be serious about making me move. You cannot be serious. And he's like, no, I am serious. You need to learn how to be an adult. So you're gonna be here in this apartment and you're gonna have to live right on your own and you're gonna have to get a job, as your landlady just said, even though I kinda hate her. 
She is the worst, but that'll be good for teaching you. It'll be good for teaching you. I think she's seeing, you know, I just, she doesn't have a choice really. So her dad's gonna help her start moving her things in. Not sure what she's gonna do with the other bedroom. He's like, I know you don't like this now, but you're gonna be happy later when you know how to be an adult. She doesn't even have a place to keep all these bookshelves. I guess, I guess this spare bedroom is gonna be her library now. He's like, see it, you got your own library. Aren't you happy about that? We're just gonna move the paintings in there. We'll lean this one against the counter because she is not gonna have the time to put them up right now at this moment. So they're just leaning against the furniture and she did have three of these bookshelves. So those fit in there pretty nicely. Maybe this can be moved in here. So this is Olivia's new living space. She's very quite angry. Where is your dad? Oh, her and her dad have even gotten all the way down to a negative relationship. She really is very unhappy with him. She's gonna do the thing that she does, read. She's just gonna stand here and read. She's gonna ignore everything that's going on. This is not happening. This is not my life. Uh, Plume's leaving. She's not even gonna say goodbye to him. She's just walking past him. And there he goes. He's gonna drive off in the truck. Now Olivia is left to her new adulting job life. He's gonna sit in her room and angrily read. She is not happy right now. Oh, but someone's happy. Oh, the landlady's real happy. Of course she's happy. She just got a new a, a renter. Oh, and Bonnie Ann's come home today too. Actually, Jack is feeling rather flirty. He's gonna ask her on date because I want them to have at least one successful date before I make them boyfriend and girlfriend. Ebony. <laughs> oh, 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 oh no. He wants to kiss her and she wants to ask Jack to be her boyfriend. So we'll mark that as well. So that's a, that's a perfect time we can have them go on the date and we'll accomplish both of these things. Very romantic. Where is a good place for romance. Perhaps we'll go to Windenburg again. We'll go to the same cafe we went to before. Oh, it's uh, thunderstorming apparently. It's romantic. Go here. Oh goodness. She's running inside. Oh, no, sh oh, where are you going? Why is Santa Claus here? Girl, get inside. You're supposed to be on a date. Once again, she has come on the date in her workout gear. Stop talking to other people and the two of you come sit. Oh my goodness, Jessica, go away. <laughs> We're gonna have some friendly things here in the rain. Santa Claus is just casually getting a bite to eat. Here's the rule. If they can get this date up to a gold level date, or up to whatever this third tier is, then they get to be boyfriend, girlfriend today, or at least get asked. A nice romantic date while soaking wet. There's plenty of movies about, you know, people kissing in the rain and stuff. I'm gonna have him tell the story so we can get that one. And then I'm gonna have him do some, the, some flirty things to try to get her into a flirty mood. Oh, someone stole our table. Oh, not in front of Santa Claus. Their relationship meter is like almost full and Jack is flirty up the bazoo. Oh, and they just gained an another good sentiment. Closer from happy memories and deeply connected. Oh, and there's that vampire lady. Oh, and it's up to a gold level bait. So I'm gonna have her ask to be boyfriend. Oh. Oh yeah. Yay. Now we're actually, we're gonna leave them to their thing and go over to Olivia, see how she's doing. Now Olivia, she's had time to calm down. She has a fine now. She's even a little bit happy from having her own decorations still in the house. Still all she wants to do is kiss someone and order pizza. But I think at this moment, she needs to find a career. She's realizing that this is her situation now, so she's gonna find a career. Maybe she's thinking that hopefully this is only temporary. Maybe if she proves that she's not lazy, maybe her parents will allow her to move back in and she can go back to her old career or something. But whatever she's thinking, 
she's definitely uh, submitted herself to getting some sort of job because she has to pay rent soon. The Miss Owner Lady, Miss Landlord Lady is not very nice. I don't want to make it easy on her and just get whatever job. We're going to say she could be a babysitter, manual labor, or retail employee. I think she's a retail employee. 9 a.m., that's quite late. How about the night shift. Does she want the morning shift or the night shift? I think she wants the night shift. So there she goes. She got a career. So she has a job now. Not sure how she's feeling about it, but she's got one. And now she wants to go to bed. Just getting the job itself was exhausting enough. Now, Jack's apartment is filled with stolen goods still. And also the landlord who I need to, I need to kick out for a moment. And the question is, what does he do with all this stolen goods? Well, that is a good question. Oh, and he's got his espionage, espionage, espionage stuff, so I'm gonna set those out in his apartment. But we're gonna take all of his stolen goods, all the art, the technology, the things, stolen computer from uh, Mr. Fortune, but he is actually going to be the owner of a retail store, a thrift shop, actually. I've decided I think I want Oasis Springs to be a bit of a shady area of town, and right here we have Jack's thrift shop, from which he, ha he is selling all of his stolen goods. Of course, no one knows that they're stolen, but uh, he does. So I actually got this build off the gallery. I switched it up a little bit, but here it is. I renovated it a little bit. I changed, uh, I had to change a lot because they had a lot of things that uh, I did not have and I didn't finish making this back porch, I realized. But inside, over here we got these posters. Inside, we have some smaller clothing items that he pickpockets and stuff randomly. But over here, we're going to have all the main things and then up all the main like items of furniture and everything. And then there's going to be an upstairs also for the same thing. Uh, maybe also a few uh, works of art. Maybe up here will be where he sells the artwork he steals. And then there's a painting here in case someone wants to make make art which they leave behind and then he can steal that and then sell that as well. So first of all, let's go ahead and put out our merchandise. We'll have the art exhibit up here in this very poorly lit area. Down here is where the furniture will be. We'll have the lamp, the chair set, the flat screen, this other chair, these little bean bag things. Over here is where we'll, where we'll display. Oh, we can't put the computers there. Never mind. We'll, we will display the computers on this table. We, I think it's crowded up there enough, so we'll put this and uh, the drinky thing upstairs so they can drink while they uh, make poor financial decisions. Let's set everything for sale. I guess we'll keep the table for now. It needs to be a display table. I'll also set some of these books for sale. Most of this is kind of just decorative, but just to uh, let you peek under the curtain some, but some of this I'll set for sale. There's a clothing, a, a, a dressing room there if they want to try on some of the clothes. Get Jack into position with his little secret, uh, store and let us open for business. Oh, and apparently he's tired, so he's gonna take a nap. Don't bother helping customers or anything. Oh, Plume is here. Is he you here to buy some art, Plume? Oh, look, he is. He's going straight. He's going straight up. Uh, he, he went straight to the art. Where's Jack? Oh, he's sleeping outside. That's fine. I wonder if Plume might become a patron. Oh, Nikki Nali, you're on the basketball team, aren't you? Uh, you're an exchange high school student. Uh, can you afford a television? A flat screen television? It's nearly midnight. It's just the all-night thrift store. Let's chat about art with uh, Plume. I think he'd like that. He's, he's learned Plume's an artist. May I interest you in some art? No one's coming over here. Oh, and Plume's back to looking at the paintings. If he buys a painting, I'm gonna laugh. I'd love for someone to buy something before I end. It's 1 a.m. The all-night thrift shop. It's not sketchy at all. It's just your normal everyday thrift store. That's it. That's the thumbnail. Perfection. I find it very interesting that Plume is here actually. You wouldn't think him being very wealthy that he'd come to a little thrift store in a shady area of town, but perhaps he really loves finding rare jewels in the art community. 
Oh, someone's buying something. Hold everything. Oh, this guy, he got to this before Plume did. I wonder if that's like some Plume relation. They actually look a bit alike. You enjoy this painting, sir? Well, that's wonderful because it definitely wasn't stolen. Oh, oh, there it goes for $712 for a thrift store painting. That is a nice game. He dislikes his own store soundtrack. Oh, someone else wants to buy something. Hold everything. I was just about to close and end the episode. But how can we close and end the episode when there's sales to be had? Oh, Nikki Nali. He has something he wants to buy. She's gonna buy one of these the dudes' chairs. Nikki Nali, he wants to buy the bar. Nikki, you are a teenager. You cannot buy the bar. I mean, Jack doesn't care, so he's gonna sell it to you. You definitely are not old enough for this. You are a teenager. Oh, and it's Independence Day. Richard wants to buy something too. Everyone stop buying things. Bring up this customer and close the shop. Oh, yep, he's definitely a teenager. He, yep, all right, Mr. Spades. Okay, now we're closing the shop. That was a profitable day. Well, it's actually 7 o'clock a.m. instead of 6 a.m. like we usually are supposed to end. But you know, business makes the decision sometimes. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Jesus loves you. Goodbye.